The daughter of Malaysian opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim retained her parliamentary seat with a narrow win in Malaysia's general election this year. Nurul Iza Anwar is the Vice President of the People's Justice Party and it's her second term in office after winning what she described as the dirtiest election in Malaysia's history. Petitions have been filed for the alleged fraud that has paved the way for the ruling coalition of Barisan Nasional to stay in power. I talked to her about her winning her seat in her short visit to Jakarta recently. Well, thank you very much for joining us here on Tempo TV. It's good to have you here. Firstly, I understand that you are under some questioning at the moment from the police in to do with sedition charges uh, in Malaysia. Can you tell me where, where that is at? Uh, well, yes, I was hauled up uh, just after Idul Fitri, after Hari Raya celebrations, um, to the police station because there was a police report lodged uh, during Suaram, a human rights NGO, uh, their fundraising dinner uh, last Ramadan. And it's very funny because this is happening and opposition leaders are being questioned when the Prime Minister, our Dr. Sri Najib Tun Raza, proudly declared his intention to abolish the Sedition Act uh, last July in the year 2012. So I think uh, there's a lot of um, deep seated resentment because post elections you expect things to be more cordial and you expect the police to maybe focus on the speed of shootings that has um, afflicted Malaysia. Does so, it silence you? I mean, does it mm, frighten you when you are pulled into the police station and threatened with these kind of sedition laws, which do yeah. come with jail sentences, don't they? They do. I think it's, it's a nuisance. Uh, I think, of course, um, it doesn't just happen to me. My colleagues are also targeted. The activists who are, um, who are not contesting during elections are being targeted. So there's a sense of camaraderie there because as long as you are dissenting against the government, you are targeted. But I so think you're happy if you're being judged? No, no, I mean, certainly no one should be happy. I think it only emboldens us to fight against, um, you know, uh, persecution, political persecution, and to abolish the Sedition Act. We have sufficient laws in Malaysia to manage harmonious relations, but uh, we certainly cannot allow such a draconian act to be misused and abused in such a manner. Now, you described the latest election in Malaysia in the campaign period as being the dirtiest in, in Malaysian history. Did it live up to that sort of uh, description that you, you gave it? Well, I mean, well, dear, yeah, there's like almost uh, one of 50 election petitions that has been fielded, not by the opposition only, but also the government, uh, the, the party, the ruling party. So it is certainly astounding looking at the numbers. And we, of course, have the, the rare privilege of uh, having a controversial implementation of the indelible ink, which was later edible for some and uh, you know, uh, consisted of food colouring for others. So, I mean, when this happens, the entire credibility of the Election Commission is destroyed, is gone to smithereens. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, I mean, we cannot continue with the current lot that's managing the Election Commission. They are partisan, there's so much uh, controversies. But you were voted comfortably back into office and the sheer fact that you, yeah. those numbers of people that voted against the opposition, doesn't that sort of show us that the system is transparent, the fact that you could be voted comfortably back into office. So it is not easy. Just because we won some seats, certainly uh, we are thankful for it, but it does not negate the fact that fraud took place. Um, why would you want to go into politics after what happened to your father, what you saw happen to him? And uh, what? The same exact question my mother-in-law asked of me. Um, because, again, we should not personalise it. You see, whatever we, we face, it was a challenging moment, but there were scores of Malaysians who also were persecuted. There were so many other political prisoners. It was not just Anwar Ibrahim. And if you don't change the system, then you allow the same government to victimise others. And that's just not how it should end. What are your political ambitions, though? <sighs> you know, I'm just glad I won my second term. <laughs> and uh, of course, you know, moving forward, um, just to ensure the Pakatan Rakyat, the opposition coalition, remains stronger than ever. And of course, we have to work from now to focus on the state elections in Sarawak, East Malaysia, 
and of course to win over the general elections. Malaysia is that ever possible? I mean, is it possible for to see Barisan Nasional not in government in Malaysia? I mean, given that they have such grassroots support across Malaysia among many Malays, and also I guess coming from Indonesia and looking at Malaysia, they do seem to serve their people in terms of basic needs, which many Indonesians would criticise their own government for not doing. We're much smaller, we're luckier in a sense, not uh, having to face massive earthquakes and tsunamis. And I think we have to take stock into that. Um, but. You know, I, I, I don't. Services work in the sense. I don't deny. Works. I don't deny. I think we had a good foundation to work with. So for me, uh, you know, it's not an issue to say that everything Barisan Nasional does is bad. No, I, I may agree with you there. I think what we're trying to say is we can offer better governance. How would the Indonesian and Malaysian relationship be different if it was under uh, your party? Malaysia would, was governed by um, your party. Well, you know, we, we always criticize. We we ask that the Malaysian government probably take stock uh, of the key pressing issues of the day, whether it's the haze, the transboundary haze that's taking place, or whether it is just the plight of foreign workers, uh, Indonesian workers in Malaysia, and perhaps put some depth into um, securing a positive outcome. You know, in terms of protecting Malaysia's sovereignty, protecting Malaysia's interests, I mean, we have no uh, bones to pick with the Barisan Nasional. Would you have any concrete policies that would improve the lives of uh, foreign workers in Yes, Malaysia? I think uh, right now our po op the opposition was at the forefront of basically asking uh, you know, for illegal foreign workers, especially Indonesians, they are subjected to quite extreme and harsh treatment uh, when they are arrested in Malaysian prisons. So we were advocating the whipping should really end, a flogging should really end, because if you have problems with papers per se, not having the sufficient documentation, it doesn't allow you to be treated in such an inhumane manner. And of course, we have always stated that refugees per se, which are recognised by the UNHCR, should also be recognised by the Malaysian government, because right now they have a problem, they are stateless. Uh, you come to Malaysia, their kids don't go to school. So on these key policy issues, I think uh, we've always raised in Parliament. So you would like Indi uh, Malaysia to sign <coughs> the International oh, yes, Refugee ratified, Convention definitely. and accept refugees? Definitely. Um, you know, and this has been raised time and again because I think it, it Including is... Including the Rohingya, I'm assuming. Of course. The Rohingyans have been um, a very close issue that's close to our hearts. In, in fact, it has taken a more bipartisan support uh, we are demanding that, that Myanmar, you know, regardless of the issue of recognizing them as citizens or not, the point is, you know, they must be protected. I mean, this is, uh, they cannot be allowed, the, the killings cannot be allowed to continue and completely, uh, complete ignorance and negligence of, of their rights and, and well-being. Because a lot of Malaysians, a lot of, I'm sure, Indonesians are very concerned and we want to hear something concrete uh, with regards to ending the um, the horrid treatment of the Rohingyans. And perhaps it is time to take a more proactive role because nothing has taken place. You know, while we are equally concerned with the events in Egypt, this is our neighbour. Um, and you know, doing right really starts at home. Thank you very much. Thank you.